Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video here. We are looking today at a Beast Box deck in Expanded. This is using the Ultra Beast and Beast Ring as the idea behind the deck here. So we'll start off here with one copy of Word Guru, or Harambe as I like to call him. We've got one Baby Buzzwool Ultra Beast there as well. We've got the Dawnwings Necrozma GX. This will allow us to do Invasion to be able to come in and do uh, free switch plays. We've got one Marshadow Let Loose for the Disruption ability to make our opponent draw four cards or for us to try and get out of a tough situation that we're stuck in. We've got two copies of Baby Mew with Memories of Dawn. It can use the attacks for any of our basic Pokemon in play. Also has free retreat cost, which is also good as well. We have one copy of Nihilago. This is Ultra Beast as well. Nightcap, we can use any attack of our opponents if they have exactly two prize cards remaining. The next card is the Nihilago GX with Empty Light. When we play him from our hand onto our bench, we leave both Pokemon confused and poisoned, which is where the Dawn Wings can come in and the Dawn Wings can invasion in. We get out of the confusion and the poison. Our opponent does not. Now, Dawn Wings has a GX attack, Moon's Eclipse does 180 damage, and it also prevents all effects including damage done to him during the next turn. Now he is weak to Dark, which means he is weak to Zorark. So that is why we go with Nihilago, because not many people are playing any form of pure Psychic deck at this moment, at least. So we have also one copy of Tapu Lele for the Wonder Tag ability. We run two copies of B-Strings, so anytime our opponent gets to three or four prize cards remaining, we're able to B-String, grab two basic energy cards, attach them to one of our Ultra Beasts. We have one copy of Computer Search. This is just the preferred A spec that I, I like to run in this deck. I run four copies of Max Elixir. We've got four Mysterious Treasure to be able to find our Psychic Pokemon, including that Tapu Lele. We've got two copies of Nest Ball. We've got four Trainer's Mail. We've got four copies of VS Seeker. We have three copies of Ultra Moon for the free retreat play. We have one copy of Ace Arola because we play the Fighting Fury Bells. That's the reason that the Ace Arola is included there. We've got three copies of Cynthia here. We have one copy of Erica's Hospitality. We can play this card only if we have four or fewer cards in our hand. We get to draw for each Pokemon in play of our opponent. And we've got two Guzma. We've got one Lily just draw support there. We do play one copy of Lucimine. Now, you cannot VS Seeker this because once you discard it, it does go to the Lost Zone. But this can be useful because we do have the ability to potentially manipulate the prize card. So if it just so happens that we have a single prize attacker, such as the Baby Bew or the Buzz will taken out, they will potentially be at three prizes once they knock out a GX. So they knock out a GX, they knock out a one prize attacker, and that's where Lucimine becomes effective. It prevents all of our Ultra Beasts. So that's the Buzzwool, that's the Dawn Wings, that's the Baby Nihilago, that's the GX Nihilago. We also have one copy of N just for disruption, one copy of Sycamore, the two Fighting Fury Belts, as I mentioned. We have the Beast Energy because we play Ultra Beasts. We have one copy of Rainbow Energy. If you can guess what that's for, it's going to be for the Baby Buzzwool. So when they do knock out a GX, we are able to sledgehammer into a peek around for a knockout as long as they don't play Fighting Fury Belt because we don't run Blower and we don't run Choice Band. So as long as they don't play Fighting Fury Belt, we will be all right with getting a one shot on them when they have exactly four prize cards remaining. And that also knocks out Zorark as well because Zorark is sitting at 210. The only time we would not knock out a Zorark is if, if it plays the Bodybuilding Dumbbells. Then we just have 10 copies of Psychic Energy. If you wanted to try to manipulate this to try to make it a little bit better in your favor, I would say play a Super Rod to try and get some of the uh, energy back into the deck in case you have uh, too many Psychic Energy in the discard when it finally becomes Beast Ring turn. But I haven't ran into too many issues with that. Um, the only other thing I could say is yes, maybe a Choice Band could be placed in here somewhere potentially. 
Um, I found that the trainer's mail were really, really helpful for us being able to find things like a Zinesse Ball, Mysterious Treasure, the uh, Max Elixirs, the VS Seekers. It really, really, really helps the deck run and it thins the deck as well as a mechanism. So it helps us uh, get more instruct pulls basically. So that's a quick profile of the deck here and we'll get into the matches next. All right, starting up the first match here. Let's take a look here. We're going to be this Volfine. I see Electric Grass Colorless here. A Shonen Zero Aura Box. So let's see, maybe this is Pikaram here. If this Pikaram is going to be definitely a good matchup for us to test the deck against. We start with the Baby Mew. We're going to start with the Baby Mew because we get free retreat with the Baby Mew. We can do the invasion plays with the Dawn Wings. We do have a fighting fairy bone in our hand, so we're we're pretty set with a really uh, a really well um, structured opening hand here. We're going to drop the fighting fairy belt onto the dawn wings. We're going to play the altar of moon. Now at this point, I want to do a trainer's mail. See what we have off the top of the deck here. I was hoping that we could find another uh, elixir. I know the first one didn't hit because the deck is very full at this point. You know, we still have a lot of Pokemon and supporters in here. So it's not it's not thinned effectively yet. So since we play VS Seeker, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lose the Guzma. We wanna get full value out of our Lily that we play as long as it is not prized. I should have done a better look here into the deck to see if it was prized. Uh, luckily it's not prized, so that's good here. We're gonna go ahead and wonder tag for the Lily. And now we will get seven cards off of, off of that Lily. So we get an energy that we can manually attach. And our trainer's mail actually doesn't hit anything on the top of the deck. We have three energy sitting there. But this trainer's mail luckily does find us a max elixir. Let's see if we hit. All right, we hit on the max elixir. So we've already got two energy in play here at this point. Now at this point, uh, we can just go ahead and retreat and bring up this Dawn Wings because I'm very safe with Pikaram being the attacker. Um, they would need three energy on it. The only other way I could see us getting hit on the first turn would be if they have some way to bring in a Zapdos and attack us. The only other thing would be a Thunder Mountain, a uh, Tapu Koko Prism, and an Energy Switch. It's kind of a lot of cards for them to hit to be able to get on the first turn. Luckily, they don't get that, so we are safe here. We have Draw Supporter as well. Since we get another Dawn Wings off the top of the deck, we're going to bench him. We're going to put the Fighting Fury Belt on him. And then we will go ahead and we're going to Mysterious Treasure away Erica, since we can just get it right back with the VS Seeker. Um, now here, as a, as a secondary attacker, I I sort of like the idea of getting this, um, this single prize Nihilego. And because they only have three Pokemon in play, we get better value by playing the Lily. So we get five cards off of the Lily. Now we can bump their stadium with the Altar of Moon. That helps us out dramatically. We have the energy that we can attach for manually. We've got the Buzzwool, but we are not going to show them the Buzzwool yet. We don't put down the Buzzwool until it is time for Sledgehammer turn. That is sort of the way that it works because we also need to find either our Beast Energy or the Rainbow Energy. So at this point, he's just sort of chilling in our hand. We've got 130 damage up on him. He's got to hit 220 damage to be able to knock us out if we keep our Fighting Fury Belt on. So he has to hit Blower and get a lot of energy accelerated or also find Thunder Mountain. Now he does do the EV energy evolution into Jolteon. So he could potentially Swift Run and create him uh, himself to be immune to damage next turn, but he'll also have to hit that Thunder Mountain as well, or a Max Elixir, but Max Elixir wouldn't work because he's already a stage one at this point. So he doesn't have the capability to do that. We're just gonna switch out because at this point, uh, we're going to do a Guzma play because we have a VS Seeker. So we're gonna be able to get a prize and knock out the Peak Rom and not just a prize, three prizes. I'm gonna just go ahead and attach the energy here to that one. I feel pretty safe doing that. And I don't know what I'm 
doing here? I don't know why I'm clicking Lily. I meant to grab Guzma. I'm getting a little bit distracted here, but we got the Guzma in our hand. There we go. We'll bring up our Dawn Wings, who has that 30 damage on him. And Dark Flash for the knockout. I think I was a little bit distracted because I put down the Nihilago GX, even though I have the uh, the Baby Buzz in my hand, and I think maybe I was thinking about that as being a misplay. But I think we'll, we'll be all right here at this point. And uh, we see the opponent play Cynthia. So you get a whole new hand here. They are playing Max Elixir in their deck. So they do have two energy on that Picaram already. And they have free retreat with Jolteon GX. They've got three energy. They've got rough seas down, so they bumped our state now. This is 150 with twist band 180. So if the field blower doesn't come out, I will live. This is why I like the the uh, fighting fury belt in this list because uh, choice band is nice, but choice band isn't going to keep you alive when Picaram can hit 180 easily with electro power, and they hit 210 with elect one electro power and choice band. So it really requires them to dig for some extra pieces before they're really able to get anything going. Now, I have one energy on the Dawn Wings. I got one energy on the Nihilago. So what this does is this enables me to be kind of set up, in a sense, for that B-string turn coming up, right? I have that option. I have that play. Because then if my active gets knocked out, I get a new bench spot. I can throw down the Buzz Bowl. That's another opportunity to make a good play as well. Uh, I'm gonna computer search here. to just get rid of a couple things. I go ahead and I grab the max elixir. And I guess at this point, we're just sort of thinning the deck. We feel pretty confident that we have uh, what we need here. Because even if he tag bolts, even if he tag bolts, we've got another Dawn Wings ready to go. And obviously this is an obvious tag bolt thing. Uh, taking out the active, taking out the Lele as it does exactly 160 damage. So and they think that they've probably rallied back at this point. They've just grabbed four prizes. That seems good, but they're damaged. They're hurt. We knock them out. We take the game. All we need is an energy. We top deck a VS Seeker. That's perfect. We can get a draw supporter and we will be able to find an energy and seal this game off here. I guess to add injury uh, or add insult to injury here, we can go ahead and we can bench this and just confuse and poison him. doesn't really matter. I think my, my strategy here is just really to uh, thin another card from the deck. We get rid of a mysterious treasure. We get rid of the Nihilago out of the deck. And uh, I mean, I debate between Lily and Cynthia in these situations, mainly because Cynthia will shuffle the deck, whereas Lily will not shuffle the deck and it will come right off the top of the deck. And Sometimes it's hard to decide which one is the better play. Um, I guess it just comes down to your own personal bias in this situation, but I clearly chose to go with the Cynthia here. And we can even Moon's Eclipse, and we got the Beast Energy. It did 220 damage, and we take the game there. So that was a good matchup to showcase uh, some of the speed of this deck here. Okay, we've got another matchup here, Air Booth. I see that they're playing Fighting and they're also playing Dark. So I'm imagining with the popularity of the deck right now that they're playing um, Zorark Lucario, which we have type advantage because the deck is built around being able to tackle both of those with one shots. Basically, the Baby Buzz was a little bit more technical to try to get the one shot. Let's see what we have here in our opening hand. We do get a mulligan. And we obviously do not want to start with the Marshadow because we want to be able to use that ability. So we're going to start with the uh, Harambe. We'll start with my boy Harambe up there. Put him up there. Maybe he can take a hit for us. Be a little tanky while we get set up here. We don't have any uh, basics in our hand at this point. We just top deck another energy. 
So let's get our stadium down. We'll get our stadium in play. And at this point, attaching an energy or doing a Guzma plate isn't really gonna help us get set up here. Now, first first basic that we do find is the uh, the baby Mew. And that's fine for this, uh, you know, for this moment right now at this point, because we can copy an attack potentially to be able to uh, set ourselves up for getting a knockout here. They do have that Ditto Prism in the active, so they could potentially turn that into a Zorark, and not this turn at least, or they could turn that into a uh, Lucario. So they go ahead and they put a unit energy onto their Rock Ruff. And we have to keep in mind that they do have the uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes ability as well, so they can pull up and drag up one of our, our bench to our active whenever they evolve into Lycanroc GX. They play a Nest Ball, they put down that uh, Riolu, getting their choice bands out and they put a judge down and I don't I actually don't mind them playing that judge kind of helps me out I could have computer searched away some stuff and it's pretty ironic because I almost got the same exact hand back the only thing that's different is instead of the b-string I have a nest ball now which I would, I would rather have the nest ball than the b-string at that point but here's irony uh, showing its face and we get the b-string right back I actually like going with the uh, Nihilego GX here, even though the Dawn Wings has the resistance. The reason I like this is because if it does get knocked out, it opens me up to the potential possibility of doing a Moon's Eclipse play. And I also don't want them to know at this point that I play the Dawn Wings. And before I play this VS Seeker, I'm going to instruct for one. And at this point, I guess it's kind of safe enough to throw down this Buzz Bowl here on the bench. We'll play the VS Seeker and we'll get a Cynthia. So this isn't a terrible hand at this point because Erica can get us cards, Lily can get us cards. We've got an energy to attach uh, manually here. Actually gonna have to attach, um, let's see here. Maybe we'll play Trainer's Mail first. Maybe be able to get out of this potentially. Um, out of all these things, I would prefer the Max Elixir. We need to get some acceleration happening here. Also keep in mind, we've got three Pokemon bench, so their uh, Dangerous Rogue GX attack can do 150 damage. So that's not enough unless they also have the Choice Band on the uh, Lycan Rock to be able to knock us out. And now that I get the Max Elixir to hit, I feel safer manual attaching here to the Ranguru, bringing up the Mew, and going and thinning the deck for another Pokemon. And at this point, uh, it doesn't really matter what I take at this point. Um, I have draw supporters, so I guess I guess we can, uh, I mean, in the long run, I don't think it really matters. I can flash the Dawn Wings at this point. I guess it's okay. I mean, we're both playing, you know, rock, paper, scissors here because he can hit me for weakness. I can hit him for weakness on certain things. So it's definitely interesting. Let's see what my opponent's able to do for their turn. They bump our stadium, Viridian Forest, and they, they pass. Okay, they put another energy on the rock rough. So we need to establish an attacker here. I almost wonder whether it would be better to establish the, the Mew, but we'll play it safe because we cannot take a full hit from a Lucario GX uh, or a Strike. I actually get a Max Elixir here and it hits. 
which makes me feel uh, pretty good at this point because now they can't turn this into a Zerua or a Zorark, I'm sorry. We'll take our first prize and I imagine that they want to bring up maybe the Rock Rock into like Rock? No, okay, so they go with Lucario. Even though it has the weakness, I don't think that's a right play. I don't know if they play Diancie. We'll see. I mean, they, okay, they are playing Pokemon Communication. They get rid of the uh, Alolan Grimer. So they play Alolan Muck in their list. And they went for the Lucario GX. So Overstrike, it's 150. No Strong Energy. With Strong Energy, only 170. With Diancie they could have done 170 so they even with diancy they needed it they needed diancy and a strong energy this is a really interesting uh top deck there that beast energy i debate putting it on buzzwool because i really don't want buzzwool to to get uh bloodthirsty eyes up into the active um once this nihilago goes down but i'm also thinking about the potential to do an acerola here and um try and utilize the Mew to do a uh, sledgehammer, but the sledgehammer would only do 60 damage. And then I could come back next turn and knock him out, but I'm realizing I, I actually have weakness damage, so I will do twice as much. I'll get the knockout for some reason. I'm thinking that um, he's weak to grass. I'm Confusing him with Lycanroc GX in this matchup, but um, I still also debate really heavily over this Beast Energy because I really want to be able to take out the Zorark as soon as it comes up, right? So I will actually hold off on doing the Beast Energy attachment to Buzzwool and I'll attach manually to the Dawn Wings. At this point, they don't know that I've got the uh, Beast Energy. So it does help me out uh, tremendously because even though uh, it can one-shot the uh, Zorark with just the rainbow, I'm worried more about this Rock Ruff turning into the Lycan Rock because they can GX for a full 200 damage, which would knock out my Dawn Wings. It would activate my B String though. Let's see here, because they played a Lily. They got a full six cards. They hit on a Zorark and they trade away a Cynthia here. So let's see, they need an Ultra Ball. Um, yeah, they just need an Ultra Ball because Evo Soda does not activate the, dang, uh, the Bloodthirsty Eyes ability. And they try to just do a uh, surprise attack, ouch. That doesn't hit for them. Oof, that, that's going to hurt. So I'm very, very safe at this point. Um, I'll put the Fighting Fury Bolt on because now I know I can't get uh, knocked out even if they, uh, even if they choice banned and uh, I was going to knock him out anyway. So definitely safe to start doing uh, more aggressive attachments here. So if they hit a DCE, and they're playing Mallow, so I assume they'll hit a DCE, they will knock this out. Um, when Sledgehammer becomes active, um, Beast Ring would become active at this point. So uh, I don't know if this is the probability of the opponent playing a bad list, or if this comes down to dead drawing in this situation, but I think regardless, we were set up very well with our bench at this state of the game that it would have been very uh, difficult for us to lose at this point. Okay, they get their DCE and they'll take out the knockout, but then um, it's game at that point. Well, we've got this one in the bag here.
All right, they riot is beating for the knockout. And here we go. We don't even have to do anything. We don't even really need to attach anything. We'll just go ahead and uh, sledgehammer here for the knockout. So we we're able to win a um, a Zorark Lucario Lycanroc matchup there. All right, we see electric and we see psychic and we see colorless, which indicates to me that this is going to be a, another Picaram deck with its popularity. I just imagine that it's going to be here. Opening hand, we open with the baby Mew, a Nest Ball, Drainage Mirror, VS Seeker. So this is pretty good. We could, we could, uh, Mysterious Treasure for a Lele. They get a draw support for our opening turn. Now we are going second though in this matchup. So they're playing Max Elixir in their list here. And they're also playing Trainer's Mail. I do like that they're playing the Trainer's Mail. They get an Ultra Ball off of the Trainer's Mail. They actually play Shaman EX in their list. I don't think that's a logical play with, uh, with Zapdos being in. Uh, full swing at this moment. I, I just don't see that. That's such a liability for uh, an easy knockout. They've got an elixir to hit and they've got the two energy down on their peak around on the bench. And they manually retreat, uh, manually attached to that one. So uh, they're not going to be able to get that zero aura up out of the active. So we do have the possibility to get something going here with our nest ball. It's always hard to decide between the Nihilego GX and the Dawnwings Necrozma GX as well. But we'll go ahead and we'll throw down the stadium here. I'm going to Trainer's Mail. So we've got two Max Elixirs in our hand, as well as a, a Mysterious Treasure. We get a Max Elixir to hit. This is looking nice. Get the, uh, the other Max Elixir to hit as well. We can treasure that away. And whew, that is disappointing. We have the Lele prize. So we have to be a little bit desperate here and try to get out of this situation by playing the Marshadow. Luckily, we haven't played a supporter yet. So we do have Erica and we can get four more cards. Unless we decide to go with using a trainer, or not um, trainer, the Ace spec card by potentially grabbing maybe a Guzma. So let's see if we get off the top of the deck with the trainer's mail. We see VS Seeker, we see N, we see Sycamore. I don't think that's the right play. We don't want to really lose our A spec, but what we can do is we can get the VS Seeker and we can computer search away the Stadium and the Erica, and we can grab a Guzma here Drop the Guzma down, swing into the Picaram. That way we have VS Seeker for next turn. We don't suspect our opponent would want to end us when we're stuck with one card. So that makes us look as if our hand is uh, is dead at this point, right? We don't have an Orin Guru down on the bench. Don't have any sort of draw support Pokemon. They get the third energy up there. They play Chorus down, so they will be able to accelerate three more energy with their first attack. Now, we could get knocked out here, and that could be a little bit disastrous, but this that relies on them hitting an Electro Power. Luckily, they haven't hit it so far, and they went and they grabbed another Shaman, so I'm thinking that they still don't have it yet at this point. I know I said it a thousand times, but we would be able to activate B-String, so we could potentially be safe next turn. And there they have a full six cards in their hand. Any Electro Powers. Another peek around. We may just be okay. And they 
full blitz. We've already got the Zero Aura uh, in attack mode at this point, so it's obviously a safe bet for them to go ahead and put that energy onto that other Picarom. We've got Trainer's Mail. I'm hoping they find like a Sycamore or something like that. Oof, now the uh, the Fighting Fury Belt really does, uh, does help me out here if I can get something off of this Erica. So now we're up to getting five cards off of this Erica. So I get the buzz wall, which is nice because we know when this Nihilago goes down, we'll be able to knock out the Picaram. We'll get three prizes. We'll be able to put our baby buzz wall down and we'll be able to attach the fighting fury belt. We've got a Sigmore. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of this altar of the moon. We've bumped one of their rough seas already. They may play, they may play uh, Aether Paradise, which could potentially possibly throw some numbers off. Um, but we actually see, um, you know, Dawn Wings come down here on the bench. And we're going to put the Fighting Fury Belt on the Dawn Wings because if our, um, if our Nihilago goes down, we've got the immunity play in the GX here. All right, so we knew that was coming. And this is where the Baby Mew comes in very handy because he's able to retreat for free. He or she, I'm not really sure, or is it genderless, I guess. And we can use our other Fighting Fairy Belt here on this uh, Buzzwool because then they will have to hit for 170 instead of 150 that they do on their first attack. And I'm just gonna stick more. I'm gonna go aggressive here because what I'm really, really looking for is the beast energy. If I can get the beast energy, I will finish this game by using Buzzwill's uh, sledgehammer. But we see the opponent just scoop at that point. So they knew that we were getting close to being able to get a return knockout basically on them. And the game was pretty much gonna be done at that point. So you can see we put a lot of pressure very quickly on our opponent. We have the ability to get an immunity turn as well. We have uh, different weaknesses that we're uh, able to hit for, making the deck quite powerful. So uh, give this deck a try. Um, the list is in our Discord. Go ahead and uh, look in the description for the link to the Discord. You guys can find all the lists there. If you have any other questions, feel free to join the Discord. I always stream on Twitch at twitch.tv Professor Drizzy. Uh, go ahead and catch one of my streams. It's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons Eastern Time. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a good rest of your day.